The RTX 4060 is touted as a very efficient GPU, and its direct competitor is the RX 7600. The 7600 has AMD's latest and most advanced RDNA 3 architecture and is its most efficient GPU to date. Based on the power scaling testing I have done before, it got me thinking, if we lower the power on the 7600, would it lose much performance? And then, with the advanced RDNA 3 architecture, how low can it go, and how would it compare to Apple Silicon? Let's get into it. The reviews of the RTX 4060 were not very favorable, and the performance was just as Nvidia told us it would be in May, before the launch of the RX 7600. I did my analysis when Nvidia released the information and said the performance would be between a 2080 and 2080 Super, and depending on the game, that's exactly what they delivered. And there is example after example after example of used 2080s being sold at about half the price of the new 4060. Same performance, half the price. I said the 4060 specs was more like a 50 series GPU and I wouldn't pay more than 229. This is just another indication and data point that the new 4060, for what it is, is way overpriced. The only interesting characteristic this GPU has is its very low power consumption, and it is the most powerful ITX-based GPU for small form factor computers. And despite 7 of the top 12 GPUs in the Steam hardware survey being a 60 series variant, with another 3 being 50 series, it is clear that Nvidia is no longer interested in providing good value at the lower end of the GPU market. Pay the ransom, or no Nvidia GPU for you. And since GPU mining died, AMD has been providing good value at the lower end of the market in the RX 6600 and 6600 XT GPUs. For me, these two are akin to the RX 570 and RX 580 GPUs that were very popular for budget builds in late 2018 and through 2019. The RX 6600 can be had for the $180 to $200 range, and the XT variants in the low $200 range. But that supply is beginning to dry up, and we have the replacement at the low end in the RX 7600. As AMD continues to destroy its Radeon brand with one blunder after another, really, you still can't buy the 7600 reference card. And by following NVIDIA's lead, the RX 7600 is not interesting at a 10% price drop from the 4060. And within weeks after launch, we can see some specials as low as 249. However, I did spot an open box deal where the 7600 was $219, and it included Resident Evil 4. So I went ahead and got that deal. One thing that is very odd with this GPU is its power consumption at 165 watts. Since the 7600 replaces the RX 6600, and the 6600 had a TDP of 132 watts, this new GPU with AMD's highly touted RDNA 3 architecture that Dr. Lisa Su herself told the world that they overachieved in its metric of 50% performance per watt somehow consumes more power than the GPU it replaces. I wanted to understand if this is the result of AMD pushing this GPU to the limits. And as I have done in the past with previous GPUs, I went ahead and did benchmarks to understand power scaling. To understand the background, please see my previous videos, link above and below. Now, in MSI Afterburner, it only allows me to scale from minus 6% to plus 5%. That's a problem. So I had to get creative by using AMD's Adrenaline software and capping the max frequency. It took a little more work, but here's the resulting chart. If you recall from my RTX 4070 video, when the power was reduced, the performance reduced slightly, and then under 80% power, the performance degraded faster, and then under 70% power, the performance really fell off. With RDNA 3 and the 7600, you see something similar except the performance doesn't really fall off until under 60% power. At 100% power, it averages 110 FPS. At just under 80% power, the performance dropped 4 FPS to 106. And at just under 60% power, the performance is down to 97 FPS. And at half the power, the performance is 84 FPS. That is 76% of the performance for half the power. One interesting thing to note is that for a decrease of performance of 10%, which drops to 100 FPS, the power dropped 38%. That translates to about 105 watts. That's pretty efficient. 
But as I said in previous videos, I maintain a 5% drop in performance is not noticeable by most people. So a 5% drop in performance translates to a 26% drop in power. And that is 125 watts. Now the 7600 is replacing the 6600 and the 6600 had a TDP of 132 watts. And Linus Tech Tips showed in their review of the RTX 4060 where the power was averaging around 130 watts in F122, whereas the 7600 was closer to that 165 watt average. So how much performance would you lose if you knock that power down to the 150 watts to 130 watt range? Taking the power axis and converting it from the power limit in percent to a power value in watts, we can now see the FPS versus the average power values. At 115 watts, like the 4060, it would be just under 102 FPS. And at 130 watts, like the 6600, it would be at 105 FPS. For those power levels, the performance range is only about 3 FPS or 3%. So as you can see, you can tune the 7600 to be as efficient as last generation's 6600 or go even lower to be like the 4060. And you will not be giving up much performance and the GPU is much quieter. But even at similar power, the performance improvement of RDNA 3 does not seem to be living up to AMD's claims. Now the best way to decrease power while minimizing the impact to performance would be to undervolt the GPU. However, I won't cover that here since the degree to which you can undervolt is completely based on the quality of the chip you received and how lucky you are at winning the silicon lottery. By the way, if you like videos like this, like, share, and subscribe, and let me know in the comments below if you would like to see the power reduced by undervolting this GPU. But how low of a power will this thing go and what will be the resulting performance? In my last video, I compared how well the new M2 Apple Silicon GPUs compared to GPUs used in desktop PCs. And I consistently received in the comments how I didn't mention the power efficiency of Apple Silicon. Now I have compared the efficiency on a performance per watt basis in previous videos, I did not cover it this time since most people who put together a PC are not as concerned with power draw. And please note that I said most people and not all people. If most people were concerned with power efficiency over performance, then most people would stop buying power hungry GPUs and we would see companies like Nvidia and AMD react and tune their GPUs for better efficiency instead of pushing them to the limits for all out performance without much regard for power consumption. But those comments did get me thinking, how would the 7600 perform if its power consumption was reduced to that of Apple's GPU? To find out which Apple Silicon GPU is comparable, let's look at the charts. The 7600 at 110 FPS falls short of the 121 FPS in the M1 Max with 32 GPU cores. And that it also falls short of the M2 Max with 30 GPU cores, which comes in at about 124 FPS. Since the 7600 comes with 32 compute units, let's compare it to the 32 cores in the M1 Max. And when benchmarking that M1 Max, it consumed on average 41 watts of power. So I had to take the power of the 7600 lower and lower. And the frame rates dropped faster and faster until I got to the absolute lowest setting I could where the 7600 was also averaging 41 watts, just like the M1 Max. And do you know what the frame rates dropped down to? 23 FPS. Just 23 FPS. It went from 110 FPS at 170 watts all the way down to 23 FPS at 41 watts. And the M1 Max with 32 cores at that same 41 watts averages 121 FPS. That is a huge gap. That M1 Max performs more than five times faster at the same wattage. Just let that sink in for a bit. That is just a mind blowing figure. You can compare performance per watt, but you don't see the comparison of the performance at the same wattage. And when you see that performance difference at the same wattage, it just makes me wonder why Apple would bother with gaming on a Mac when it seems an Apple Silicon gaming handheld machine could just destroy the Steam Deck and the Nintendo Switch. Then again, they probably couldn't sell an Apple Silicon gaming handheld at a price that market demands. In any case, Apple Silicon is way ahead in achieving high performance at very low power levels. 
Really, they are generations ahead. Now seeing the results of the 7600, and I just have more questions as to the performance claims of RDNA 3 over RDNA 2. Right now, it's looking more like 50% performance per what? To find out, I purchased a comparable RDNA 2 GPU for testing, and it was just delivered today. Now the fun begins. Hit that sub button if you want to see that next. In the meantime, you can check out my other videos here. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.